So children, we meet once again with some more patterns and then we will start with exercise 6.1 in part 4 of squares and squares. I hope you all enjoyed solving those patterns. You know, it is like a game. So, let's observe some more patterns and then we will start with our exercise 6.1. So, let's begin. Now, the product of two consecutive even or odd natural numbers. First of all, you should know what are even and odd numbers. You already know that. But once again, I will explain. Even is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. They are all even numbers. And consecutive even numbers means the numbers next to each other, one after another. If I am taking the even number 6, then the next consecutive number will be 8. Or I can say 4 and 6 are consecutive numbers or 6 and 8 are consecutive numbers. But 4 and 8 are not consecutive even numbers. So the numbers one after another and that too even. So they are known as two consecutive even numbers. If I am taking odd numbers, then we know the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 9, uh, 13, they all are odd numbers. It goes on and on. There are infinitely many odd natural numbers and infinitely many even natural numbers. So, two consecutive even natural numbers means, uh, even natural numbers means either I can take two then the next number will be 4. So, they are consecutive even natural numbers. But if I take odd natural numbers, if I am taking 1, then the next natural number will be 3. And if I am taking 3, the next natural odd number will be 5. Or if I am taking 9 as the odd number, then the next natural odd number will be 11. So, 9 and 11 are two consecutive odd natural numbers. Now, the product of these consecutive even natural numbers or odd natural numbers, how can they be expressed as? See, 11 into 13 is 143. And it was found that that is equal to 12 square minus 1. Now, observe. We have to observe this pattern. See, 11 and 30. They are odd consecutive numbers. Now, the number between these two odd number is 12, which is even. And it will be, it can be expressed as 12, 11 can be expressed as 12 minus 1. And 13 can be expressed as 12 plus 1. You know that. And that is equal to 12 square minus 1. We have learnt this in expansion in standard 7. A plus B into A minus B is equal to A square minus B square. Here also suppose this is A and this is B. This is A and this is B. So, that is equal to A square minus B square. That is, A is 12 and 1 is B. So, 12 minus 1 into 12 plus 1, which is equal to A square. A square is 12. So, 12 square minus 1 B square. B square is 1 square and that is 1. So, any two consecutive even numbers or odd natural numbers. They can be expressed in similar manner. Product of them. them. So, 11 into 13 is equal to 143 which is equal to 12 square minus 1. The number between them is 12. So, 12 square minus 1. Here, 11 into 13, I have written it as 12 minus 1 into 12 plus 1 which is 12 square minus 1. Similarly, 13 into 15. We know the number in between is 14. 
13 can be expressed as 14 minus 1 into 15 can be expressed as 14 plus 1. So that is equal to 14 square minus 1. So we know that 14 square is what? 196 minus 1 which is equal to 195. You multiply and find out is it really equal to 195? Similarly here 29 into 31 without multiplying if I want to find out what is 29 into 31. I know that they are consecutive odd natural numbers and the number between 29 and 31 is 30. So 30 square minus 1. What is 30 square? 900 minus 1. So it will be 899. You multiply and find out whether it is really 899. So similarly 29 into 31 is equal to 30 minus 1 into 30 plus 1. So that is equal to 30 square minus 1. Now I am taking some even number 44 into 46 which is the number in between 45. So 44 can be expressed as 44 45 minus 1 into 46 can be expressed as 45 plus 1. So that is equal to 45 the whole square minus 1 square which is 1. So in general we come to one formula here. Whenever there is a product of two consecutive even or two consecutive odd natural numbers, we can write it in this form a plus 1 into a minus 1 which is equal to a square minus 1. Let us check whether you have really understood or not. You will think before I give the answer. Suppose it is 98 into 100. Now, which is the number between 98 and 100? You think it. Have you thought which number it was? Okay, I think you all must have thought what it was. And I am giving you again 3 seconds to get, write it in this form. A square minus 1. Okay, so you all must have thought about it. Three seconds are over. You must have thought about it. So here 98 into 100. How can it be expressed? You must have already thought that between 98 and 100, the number in between is what? 99. So it will be 99 minus 1 into 99 plus 1. And that is equal to 99 the whole square minus 1. So did you think it in this manner? I hope you must have really thought it in this manner. So, I hope you have understood. Now, let's go to one more interesting pattern. See, observe the squares of the numbers 1, 11, then 1, 1, 1, etc. Square of 1, 1 square. Let's see. And they give us a beautiful pattern. It is a very interesting pattern and it is very easy also. See, the, here the digit is 1. So, 1 square means 1. Now, here 11 square. How many 1s are here? 2. That means 2 digit. So, what I do is, it will be 1, 2, 1. So, I will go till 2 digit, starting from 1. 1, 2. Then I go reverse. 2, 1. So, I will write 2. And then the next digit I write is 1. Now there are 3 digits here. 1, 1, 1 square. This is only correct for when all the digits are 1. Okay. So here there are 3 1s. So I go till 3. 1, 2, 3. Then I go reverse. 3, 2, 1. Now see here. 4 digits. 4 squares. So I go till 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I go reverse. 4, 3, 2, 1. Now there are 5 ones. That means 5 digits. So I go till 5. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I go reverse. 
4, 3, 2, 1. Now see. Here there are 8 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 digits. So I will go till 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then I go reverse. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Is it clear? Now after this, write the square making use of the above pattern. I hope you have understood this pattern. Now using this pattern, we will find out the square of the following numbers. The first one, it is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 square. Is it clear? So, it is 1,11,111 square you have to find out. Now, there are how many digits? Let's see how many digits are there. There are 6 digits. The given number is 6 digits. So, the middle number will be 6. That means we will go till 6 and then we will go reverse. So, let's see. What is it equal to? So, 1, 1, that is 1,11,111 1, uh, is, sorry, it is 11,11,111. 11, so, it will be 1, there are 6 digits. So, we will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we go reverse. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, middle number will be 6. Now here, how many digits are here? Let's see 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, there are 7 digits. So, the middle number will be 7. That means we will starting from 1, we will go till 7 and then we will go in the reverse order. I repeat. There are seven eleven ones, so we will go till seven. Like here, there were eight ones, so we went till eight. And then we went in the reverse order. So the middle number was what? Eight. Now here, there are seven ones, so here the middle number will be seven. And then we will go in the reverse order. So how we will go? Have you thought? Yes. One. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Stop. Then go in the reverse order. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It was really interesting, isn't it? Okay. Now we start with another interesting pattern and then we will start with the exercise. So let's see that which pattern is this. Now here, let's observe the pattern. 7 square, so 49. Then I have added one six. 67 square. So I got 4489. Then 667. I'm adding 116 here everywhere. 667. So it is 444889. Now there are 3, 6 and 1, 7. So, there will be 4 4s and 3 8s and 1 9. See, number of 6 are 3. So, what I will write is number of 4 will be 1 more. 10 6, so 4 4s and 3 8s and 1 9. There will be 1 9 only always. Now, here, see there are 2 6s, so 3 4s. 2 8s and 1 9. Let's check for another one. How many 6s are here? 4 6s and 1 7. So, as there are 4 6s, I will write four, 5 4s. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 5 4s, 8, 4 8s and 1 9. 8 will be as many as 6. 4 will be 1 more than the number of 6s and it will end with 9. Now here 1, 2, 3, 
four, five. Five sixes, one seven. So how many fours? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And how many sixes are there? Five. So six fours, five eights, and one nine. I hope you have understood this pattern. Once again, I will explain. See the number of sixes. So number of fours will be one more. If there are two sixes, then there will be three fours. And then number of eights will be same as number of sixes. If there are two sixes, then the fours will be followed by two eights and one nine. Nine will always be one. So here also as there are four sixes, I will first write five fours. Then number of eights will be same as number of sixes. So I will write four eights and one nine. Is it clear? Okay, let's start. I hope you are clear so you will be able to solve this using the following pattern. Now this given pattern. Now here it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So how many 4's I will write? There are 6 sixes, So I will write 7 4's, 6 8's and 1 9. Let's see if I am correct. Once again I repeat. First count the number of 6's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are six sixes. So how many fours I will write? Seven. Seven fours. Then how many eights? Six eights and one nine. Let's see. Yes, it is correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six. And one nine. Is it clear? Now let's count here the number of sixes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So how many 4's I will write? 8. And how many 8's? 7. And 1, 9. So let's see. Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 4's. Six, uh, sorry, seven eights and one nine. Is it clear? Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one nine. I hope all these patterns are very clear to you. You can also try them by yourself, adding one more six here, or you can write ten sixes and one seven the whole square. Within a second, you can answer it, isn't it? Okay, so I hope you are clear with all the patterns, all the properties because all these patterns and properties will be making use of it in exercise 6.1. So let's begin with exercise 6.1. Now, what will be the unit digit of the square of the following numbers? Now, what will be the unit digit of the squares of the following numbers? Now, we had one property that the unit digit here, if the unit digit is x of a number, if a number has its unit digit as x, then the unit digit of its square will be the unit digit of x square that is x into x. Understood? If the unit digit of a square is x, then the unit digit of its square will be the unit digit of x square. You have to find what will be the unit of this square of 81. The square of 81 will have Unit digit what? Unit digit you know what it is? The last number. Yes. Now here the unit digit of 81 is what? 1. So the square of 81 will have what? 1 into 1 is 1. So the square of 81 will have its unit digit 1. Why? Because 1 into 1 is 1. 
Let's take another one. This 272. What is the unit digit here? 2. So the unit digit of square of 272 will be 4. Why 4? Because 2 into 2 is 4. Let's see. Yes, the unit digit of the square of 272 will be 4. Why? I have given you the reason because 2 into 2 is 4. Now here it is 9. The unit digit of 799 is 9. And we know that 9 into 9 is 81. There are two numbers. But which is the last number in 81? 1. Yes. So the unit digit of 799 will be 1. Once again I repeat. See here the unit digit is 9. So 9 into 9 is what? 81. And what is the unit digit in 81? 1. So the unit digit of 799 will also be 1. Let's see. Yes. Therefore the unit digit of 799 will be 1. Why? Because the unit digit in 81 is 1. We had already seen it here. Now 3853. Can you tell me what will be the unit digit of the square of 3853? Square means 3853 into 3853. You will get some answer. And what will be the unit digit of that answer? Like here 81 into 81. So you will get something. The product will be something. And you have to find the unit digit of that answer. So here also 3853. The unit digit is 3. So what will be the unit digit of square? Square means 3853 into 3853. I think I am clear. Isn't it? Yes. So 3853 into 3853. You will get some answer. And what is the unit digit of that answer? You are not asked the answer. You are just asked the unit digit of that answer, that product. So what will be the unit digit? 3 into 3 is what? 9. Yes. So therefore the unit digit of the square of 3853 will be 9. Now here, 1, 2, 3, 4. What will be the unit digit of the square of this number? Square of this number, once again I am explaining, pay attention. Square of 1, 2, 3, 4 means 1, 2, 3, 4 into 1, 2, 3, 4. And what is the, you will get some answer. And what is the unit digit of that answer? So here the unit digit is 4. So 4 into 4 is 16. And in 16, the unit digit is 6. So the square of 1, 2, 3, 4 will have 6 as its unit digit. Let's see. Yes, the unit digit of square of 1, 2, 3, 4 is 6. 4 into 4 is 16 and the last number is 6. So 6 is the unit digit of square of this number. Not of this number but square of this number. Now the next one, 2, 6, 3, 8, 7. Can you tell me what will be the unit digit? Think. Two more seconds I give you to think. Okay, now see whether your answer is correct. Yes, the unit digit of square of 2, 6, 3, 8, 7 is 9. Why? Because 7 into 7 is equal to 49. So the last number is 9. So the unit digit of square of this number will be 9. Now children, in, you have to underline the unit digit of the question in the question also. If I am writing 81, you underline the unit digit here. So you don't have to write that 1 is the unit digit of 81. Therefore, the unit digit of 81 will be 1. You can straight away write. When you have underlined, it is understood that unit digit here is 1. And therefore, the unit digit of square of 81. This word is very necessary. Unit digit of square of 81. If you don't write square, it will become 81. Is it clear? Similarly, here it is same. But here the unit digits are different. The number is 272 
and the unit digit of the square of the number will be 4. Is it clear? Understood? So, you will write in the similar manner. Now, question 7 to 10. That is 7, 8, 9 and 10. They are of the same type. So, those sums you will do it by yourself in your classwork book. In classwork book, you will write down all the patterns. All the patterns, even the properties also. You will draw that table also which was given in part 1. You will draw that table, you will write down the properties, then you will write down what was given in part 2. We started with some patterns, interesting patterns, you will write down all the patterns. When you write, you are more clear and maths, you need to write it down. You cannot just listen or see and you cannot think that you know it. After you do it in your notebook, you will come to know whether you know it or not. So, you do all these, whatever is given in part 1, part 2, part 3 and part 4. You do it, see that your notes are complete because your exams are nearing. So, all the best and complete your work and do 7 to 10 in your class workbook. Now, we will meet in part 2. We will continue with this exercise in the next part that is part 5. So till then see you.